The other thing about domain names is you all know about .org and .co and .com, but are you aware of other domain names like .biz and .info? These are called TLDs. TLDs means top level domains. And it describes the ones that are available. There's 21 top level domains. And I'm going to show you uh, the difference between the two, tactically speaking. The proper term is GTLD. GTLD means the top level domains that are available, like .biz, .info, .coop, and so on. And the reason why I wanted you to know these is because if you wanted to register uh, KarenLee.com and it was taken, which would probably be the case because that's a common last name, right? You could perhaps get KarenLee.biz because somebody hasn't registered yet. Many names, short words like apartment and condominiums and car rental and so on, are always taken in the .com, .org, .net, .ca, .uk. But some of the new TLDs, those are available, mostly because a lot of people don't know about them. So there's a list of all the new TLDs. You've got .jobs, you've got .mobi, that's the one I'll talk about in a few seconds, .info, INT, TEL for telecommunications, travel, and so on. So let's just go back here. And I wanted to talk about a couple that you might not have heard of. Um, .mobi. .mobi is a new domain name that just became available for people looking at web-based content on their cell phone. Now, some of you may know that a lot of people are thinking about designing websites with a smaller number of pictures, pictures that are cropped differently, font sizes that are different so people can see them on Blackberries and other devices like that. It's one of the things I'm going to do with Whitaker.mobi. So you don't even have to come to class and just look out and see beautiful scenery of the 404. And you'll be sitting there in the parking lot looking at Whitaker.com and .mobi. Or at work still making money instead of being here losing money because you're sitting in the desk, right? But the point I'm getting at, this is an example of one of those new TLDs that I wanted you to know about because when you're giving advice to people about what domain names are available, this is something you can talk about now, the .mobi. There's also some other ones that countries have like .me. ME is from Montenegro. Do you know where that is? Pardon? Go ahead. It's in Eastern Europe. Now, some little countries that only have populations of 100,000 or a couple of million have made money on the internet by allowing their domain names to be bought for business purposes because the ending is cool. And you can see some examples right here. If you scroll down this list, these are all the countries of the world. You know ones like CA for Canada, but you've got CI for Coast of Ivory, CO for Company, CV, so a person could have Tim at resume.cv, which would be kind of cool. And so companies are using this to be able to market themselves among the World Wide Web and people who want to buy domain names. There's all kinds of interesting ones like .tv. This little tiny country called Tuvalu has <laughs> sold domain names for companies in the U.S. that want to put programs on, like uh, entertainmenttonight.tv. The ICANN is somewhat like the United Nations of Internet Domain Names. It's the one that technically creates the TLDs that are possible and has basic fundamental rules governing the way that countries, national bodies organize their domain names. But having said that, there's no rules or regulations guiding how individual domain name resellers will sell their domain names to the public. And that's where you have to be a little bit more circumspect because people can be somewhat unscrupulous. If somebody's thinking about buying a domain name that ends in .ca, you can contact the CIRA, which is a Canadian Internet Registration Authority, and say, uh, there's this guy named uh, Mubin Telha, and he's going to sell me this .ca domain name, uh, apartments.ca, for $5, and I want to know if that's legit or not. And you can contact the CRA and find out if they're a legitimate registrar. So let me go over those terms. A registrar is a person who has the legal authority to sell you a domain name. Right? A registrant is someone who buys a domain name. And TLDs are top-level domain names. 
So what I'm going to do is give you an example of a domain registrar that I do, and we can have some fun and find out if yours is available, and I'll show you some other tricks related to that. So, um, Melissa, let's find out if your last name, A-D-R-A-G-N-A, -A -A, is available as is. Have you ever checked it before? Okay, let's check. <sighs> Look at them. The .com is taken, but the .ca is available, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. If you got 50 bucks, you can buy it right now. Now, here, do you have a lot of cousins you want to make money off of? Does your father have many brothers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's very unusual. That is seven letters. It's very unusual for a person to be able to buy their last name as a domain in the country in which they live. So if you ever decide to go in business for the future, you should buy it. If not, I'm going to buy it for you because I know you're a smart person in my class. I had you for a previous course. I'm going to buy it, and then a couple years from now, you're going to see it's taken. You're going to come to me, and I'll sell it to you for 200 bucks. How's that sound? <laughs> Deal? <laughs> it used to be that you could click here and find out who took it and when the expiry date was. And here's the thing you could find out. If the expiry date is, say, October 15th, 2009, you write down in your day timer October 14th. And if midnight comes around and the person hasn't bought the domain name, you can put in a bid to buy that domain name if they didn't renew. Because one thing you need to know, Ricky, is a lot of people buy their last name as a domain, and after a year or two, they end up not renewing because they didn't have 50 bucks spare on their MasterCard at the time, and it lapses. So there's thousands and thousands of domain names that got bought that then lapsed because people didn't renew it, and they go back into the system again, and you can buy it. That happens quite often. So if your last name is taken as a domain, it doesn't mean anything anyways. It could be that some individual person bought it as a student thinking that they might in the future. So let's type Ricky in front. The dot name is a domain that probably some of you don't know. So I'm going to, have to explain that in a few seconds because I wanted you to have, okay, let's, um, Richardson.com, all right? Tim at, which would be typical email address, right? Now. It's probably likely that Richardson.com got bought a long time ago by some company in the U.S. So if I wanted to have an email address, regardless of what company I'm working in, here's what I can do. I can buy the domain name Tim at Richardson.name. Cool, eh? So if you find that your last name like Smith or Johnson or Marshall or Reuben or Shaw or So or whatever is already taken, chances are that the dot name might still be available because only a few people know about that and that just became recently an opportunity. So at the end of the class when I ask you if you learned anything useful or interesting, you can buy your email address for perpetuity. Now here's a reason why that's important to know. Because I know that all of you are quite smart in this class, you're going to get great jobs when you graduate, but I almost guarantee that two and three years from now you're working in completely different companies because you'll get laid off or you'll jump ship or you'll get promoted and have an opportunity to leave another company or so on. So you have to switch your emails all the time. So you'll be Karen at Microsoft.ca and then it's Karen at Nortel.ca and then Karen at Rim.ca. If you're Karen at Rim.ca, definitely call me because I want to buy more shares. <laughs> but So the point I'm getting at is your email jumps around all the time. It's hard for people to connect on Facebook and LinkedIn and stuff like that. But if you had Karen at so.name and you kept using that over and over year after year, it would be easier for people to get in touch with you, right? So that's why it's good to be able to have that .name available. And you can buy it through internic.ca for 30 bucks and use it which is separate than buying the domain name. You don't buy the domain name richardson.name, you buy the email.name, okay? Something for you to know.